I'm Scott Heimendinger. I write the blog SeattleFoodGeek.com, but I also work for Modernist Cuisine, the art and science of cooking. What we've done here is we've taken a bunch of common foods. Uh, so we've got cauliflower and onions and cucumber and celery and uh, lettuces, potato down here, kidney beans, other things like that. We put them through um, a blender or a juicer in some cases, and then we've spun them in the centrifuge. What that does is it separates the components of those foods out by their density. In the case of, for example, grapefruit juice, you can see that all the solids have settled at the bottom and we're left with this very clear liquid, uh, which would be great for use in a cocktail since it still tastes just like grapefruit. But in some cases, we get an additional uh, surprise, some other wonderful things happening. This is uh, pea. So here we've got the pea solids, the starchy bit at the bottom. Up here is the clear pea water. And then in the middle, it's hard to see, but there's a very thin layer of what we call pea butter. And the flavor, it's like the platonic ideal of a pea. It turns out that when you, that, uh, when you taste, the presence of starch inhibits your ability to perceive sweetness. So once you take the starch out, you end up with pea water and this pea butter that tastes much sweeter than actual peas do. What this piece really illustrates is that using uh, scientific technique and laboratory equipment um, can unlock a whole new world of cooking and foods that we have available. We sort of assume that we we're working with a fixed set of ingredients and a fixed set of techniques, but in fact the opposite is true. We're discovering new techniques every day, and with something like centrifuged foods, we're actually discovering new ingredients as well.